Never gonna get it, 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 never gonna get it. Boop, 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 boop. Hi, I'm Brian Augusta, and this is What a Night, a show I do in my living room for comedy, <laughs> with some help from my friends. Uh, this is the first episode that I'm recording after the Black Lives Matter movement has reignite, reignited across America and across the world. And I wanted to take a minute to, uh, to focus on that for my humble audience, my friends and my family, to say, yeah, Black Lives Matter. And there are things that we can do to make sure that going forward, we uh, recognize that and we make it safer to be black in America. Because we've all known for a long time that it's been more difficult. There's been a system of systemic racism and violence in this country. And a lot of smart people are coming up with solutions and actions that we can take. And I've included links to some articles that I found, found helpful and some other places where you can donate your time and your money to help make a difference. So those are in the show notes of this episode. Please go ahead and check those out. And thank you. Now, let's do some news jokes. First, are you concerned with how the pandemic is affecting your tennis game? Not to worry, this lady has you covered. Every player, unless they're from the safe, same household, has to bring their own tennis balls so that you don't touch other people's tennis balls um, with your hands. You can kick their balls, but you can't touch them. <laughs> I'm going to blush, sorry. Um, of course, if you're pl if you're playing with someone in your household, you can touch those tennis balls. Uh, to avoid confusion, <laughs> Facebook still refuses to shut down politicians' misleading posts, but it is trying to register four million voters. Mark Zuckerberg, shown here, being asked, "Who's a good boy? Who's such a good boy? Who's a good boy?" And this week, scientists announced the discovery of a new galaxy, the Wolf Disk inspiring heavy metal bands everywhere to repaint the sides of their vans. More trouble for Amazon. Their heavily automated human resources system is reportedly leaving workers in sick leave limbo. And if you like sick leave limbo, Amazon suggests these other games. Hazard pay, sorry, or their bestseller, online retail monopoly. Walt Disney World in Florida has announced its plans to reopen next month with its attractions modified for the safety of its guests during the pandemic. For instance, the Pirates and the Pirates of the Caribbean will have eye patches and mouth patches. The spooky Twilight Zone Tower will be renamed simply, Welcome to 2020. And a new sign at Spaceship Earth will remind guests, sorry, but this ride won't actually take you off the planet. And finally, Tom Petty's family has sent the Trump campaign a cease and desist letter to stop using his hit song, I Won't Back Down, at campaign rallies. But they did offer an alternative. Don't come around here no more. Hey! So doing this show uh, takes a lot of hard work. And sometimes I need some help from my funny friends. So I reach out to social media and they help me. <laughs> and I call this segment, The Feed. So I asked, what are some TV shows as food dishes? Here we go. Magnum Pie. Saved by the Belgian Waffles. How I Met Your Smothered Pork Chops. I want to watch that so bad. Oh, I'm, I'm drooling. Mmm. Better. Joni Loves Lockies. Beat, boot, boot, beat, boot, 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 boot. So my buddy Quentin uh, continues to challenge me in my uh, geographical knowledge in a segment that we call Brian Draws Estates. So I'm just going to read off state. And then I'm going to draw it. Are you going to introduce this? Are you recording? Are you recording? I'm, I think I'm recording, yes. Idaho. When I see it on the map, I, can, I know what Idaho looks like. Draw it to your brain. Maybe if I start. Oh, it's got like some stuff going out over here. And then it goes like this, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to color it in. <laughs> This is mesmerizing, man. I think if we took, I seriously, I kind of think like if we took the audio and the picture away 
and did, did an experiment where we said, who do you think drew this? People would be like, oh, that guy's never seen, he couldn't have seen the idol before. <laughs> he's, just, he's just drawing things. <laughs> Idaho. All right. I know what it looks like. I could see it on a map. It's kind of like Texas. It's got some stuff like this. Okay. Florida. So Florida has this straight top. Then it's got, you know, because Tallahassee is over here. But then it kind of droops down. And then it kind of goes. And then it kind of, it's got the little... You know, a little thing here it gets a little bit deeper. It's like a sock. And then you've got the keys going out over here. That's impressive. My friend. That's the best one you've done so far. It's a very distinct state, but you did. That's good. You, yep. I, I believe you're American again. I'm American. Purdue in America. Minnesota. It's got... It's, it's, it's one of those like Illinois shaped kind of things, that kind of thing. And then like that, I think <laughs> that's the best I can do right now. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Okay. That's just like, a, that's like a square. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's what I got. Man, you sure you want people to see this? Uh -huh. Missouri. So Missouri borders the Mississippi and then it kind of goes out to the, over here and then it's up here. And then there's like this thing like that. I think that's, I think that's it. Good Lord. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's like a, it's like a jeans butt pocket. <laughs> there's the butt. There's the pants. It's like a guy sitting down having a sandwich. <laughs> Here's his little jean butt pocket. Here's his belt. Here's his hairy legs. <laughs> He's having a sandwich. I'm trying, trying not to be offended here, man. <laughs> What's next? Yeah, let's get rid of that. That wasn't. That was. Uh, that was the worst one. So I got a guest, huh? I interviewed somebody. He's a friend of mine, he's a magician. He's gonna do some magic. He is also a licensed, uh, practicing licensed mental health counselor. Please welcome Tyler Twombly. Oh, thank you. All right, Brian. I have uh, a little test for you. Now, before I get into this test, I just wanna share with you that in my work as a therapist, which I spend my days talking to people, uh, much like we're talking now. Uh, so I do therapy from my, my home these days since uh, the pandemic has changed the way we work. I'm very interested in the assumptions that we make about the world. And part of understanding how we make assumptions is also understanding how we recognize things. So I have a facial recognition test for you. Okay. okay. Now, the first one is going to be, maybe, maybe it'll be easy, maybe it'll be hard. We'll find out. But, all right. So do you recognize this upside down face? Yes, it looks like you. Okay, yes, yes. We turn it that way and voila. It is me, yeah. Uh, classy black and white image, and you were able to recognize that face when it was upside down. So now watch this. When we turn it back, ah, interesting, huh? Nothing happens. Okay. <laughs> what we're actually going to do? We're actually, you still recognize the face. We're actually going to put it on this little clip over here, and we'll just let it let it rest. Okay. Now, I have a second face for you, Brian. Okay. All right, this one might be a little bit more challenging. I'm not sure. All right, do you recognize this upside down face? Yes, it, it looks like me. Okay, right. All right, it looks like you. 
All right, now watch this. That doesn't look like mm -hmm. me. All right, that's, it, there's something weird. Your face has been altered. But now watch this. This is the weird, real magic part. You know this image is altered right about here. Yeah. It looks normal again, right? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. It's your own face. You're recognizing the face, okay? So what's happening here is your brain is taking in all the, the, the various parts of the image and putting them together at once, all right? Not taking in the individual parts. So this helps us to understand how we recognize faces. We're not, we're not taking in individual parts, we're taking in the whole. Our brain sees the whole picture. We say, okay, we see a mouth, we see eyes and a nose. Got it, face, big deal. Your brain stops there. It doesn't go any further. And the thing is, we can make a lot of mistakes when we are sort of going through our daily lives. We're making snap judgments constantly. We're constantly relying on assumptions to keep us kind of functioning in our lives. Mm -hmm. Now, your face was looking a little weird, but I didn't think that was very polite to come on a show and just mess up someone's face. So. I fixed your face. So, oh my God. <laughs> Some interesting, interesting stuff about faces here. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the <laughs> trick. <laughs> that's that's it, like, man. It, yeah, because there's no audience. It's like, who's hopping? Oh, it's just me. <laughs> this optical illusion is known widely as the Thatcher illusion because um, one of the the first um, iterations of this particular illusion where, you know, the, the eyes basically have been flipped upside down and the mouth has been flipped up, upside down. Yeah. Um, was done with a picture of Margaret Thatcher. Mm -hmm. But the illusion still works. When you turn it upside down, your brain just sees those elements of face, you know, eyes, nose, mouth, and just puts it together. It doesn't, it doesn't really care that they're not in the correct orientation. You get the surprise of, of seeing that, oh my God, my brain is, you know, is strange in how it functions, but then also, oh my goodness, I don't, I didn't even realize that like I was, I was, I was seeing something that had, had changed and I didn't know that didn't it was, even it was know. different. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I thought I it was, no idea. I thought it was an interesting way to mix psychology and magic together. Um, and you know, I try to use that in my work as much as I can. Yeah, let's, so that's interesting. Let's talk about that. So, the, um, well, first of all, I want, I do want to mention that uh, you were on uh, Penn and Teller's show, Fool Us, uh, mm -hmm. Fool Us with Penn and Teller. And you, yes. you did a trick, uh, I'll show a little clip of it, of you with a, uh, a post-it note. Here it is. Please welcome Tyler Twomey. Could you please join me up here on stage? Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. It's an honor to meet you. You can stand right here. Now we're going to have you choose a letter, but not just any letter. I'm sure when you were younger, just starting out in your career, you had a big dream, a vision for your life. Okay? I want you to think of a big dream that you had that actually came true and the winding path that the pursuit of that dream took you down. All right, so just think of one letter from the alphabet to represent that big dream, and you can whisper it right in my ear once you've thought of it. He can speak. <laughs> now, we're going to place that dream inside a perfect little bubble. Mm. Eh, not totally perfect, but it'll do. This is Teller's dream, and this is where we start to tell our story. Now, in the beginning, a dream is just a dream. It doesn't go anywhere until that initial exertion of effort sends it off in some direction. Then you gotta make some choices. You probably made some choices, some good, some maybe questionable. 
sends it off in yet another. But then, through a series of events, both serendipitous and planned, we wind up where we are right here today. This is for you, and this is just one single page in the story so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. What was the entire experience of going on a big national show like that like? I had made an instructional video for that sticky note trick because I sell, I sell that, you know, the instructions on how to do that um, to awesome. magicians, you know? Yeah, Because so, yeah. I invented it. I was like, oh, I don't know. I had these performance videos of that trick lying around from the shoot for that video. Mm -hmm. And I sent them in. And it was very surprising like, how quickly they got back to me. Yeah. Did they help you come up with the uh, script that you did during the show, or? No, not really. I mean, I wrote, I wrote that. Cool. Um, the whole thing. That's that's my idea. But they they did have some suggestions here or there. They're like, hey, we have, we know what's going to work for television. We have these eight minutes to fill. Uh huh. Yeah, but I mean, I had no business being on TV. Um, no, <laughs> I'm not. You really feel that way? A lot of the guys who go on to that show, I mean, they've had, you know, these big careers in magic and they... Other TV credits, maybe, yeah. Yeah, and I was just like sort of humbled to be there. Yeah, but that note, so you do have a kind of non-traditional magician's um, background and current job. Like I said, you had a day job, um, but part of what you, you do is you combine um, the mental health profession with magic. Mm -hmm and you make people's problems magically disappear. Uh, yeah, the, everything's true except that last part. Oh, uh, okay, that's not true. Oh, all right. People make their own problems disappear or change. Right? You can't uh, be like, smoke bombs! <laughs> You're cured! Like, oh, oh, these are your negative thoughts. Watch them disappear. <sighs> what? What happened? But the, you know, the, the parallels are are, are really strong. But is there an example of where some kind of issue might prompt something that you learned in magic that'd be helpful? Yeah, so so back to, you know, back to this illusion with the faces. Yeah. Assumptions are being made all the time. We're looking at how our thoughts affect our emotions. Yeah. We have this term in cognitive therapy called cognitive distortions. Mm-hmm. And it's just basically categories of the ways that we, you know, interpret the world negatively. You know, I'll give you a couple examples. Sure. Like black and white thinking, you yeah. know, making something like good or bad, and, you know, and not really being able to see the in-between. Uh-huh. Or, you know, negative filtering where, you know, you get 10 compliments on a sweater and then one person's like, I don't know if that color goes well with your eyes, you know? And then you're like, what, what are you going to remember? The one. You know, the one person. Yeah. What's wrong with my eyes? You know, so, right. We, we do better in our own mental health, I'll say, when we understand that these types of processes are going on constantly. Yeah. And it's how we're built. You know, it, it's Im important for our survival that we sort of assume the worst because if we get complacent, maybe we won't eat tonight, you know? <laughs> or maybe we'll make a wrong uh, choice in our life and people will be mad at us and we'll have to deal with shame, right. which is something that we've experienced in the past. I'm just spitballing off the top of my head. I just No can't personal imagine. experience. No, I, just... I never experienced yeah. disappointment. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, the, the situation that we're we're in now in this country yeah. where, um, you know, first this virus yeah. comes out of nowhere and disrupts everything. And then as, you know, related and on top of that, now we have nationwide protests right. against police brutality. Yeah. And it's really bringing into, um, into sharp focus the fact that we are going about solving problems in society and in our communities the wrong way. Yeah. Not everything can be solved by a guy with a gun. 
And, and so we need to pour more resources into, uh, you know, social services and things like that. I mean, I know I'm biased because I'm a therapist, but, you know, I got into this because I really care about mental health. We have an enormous capacity to, you know, as human beings to, to care for one another, um, but we're not doing it. Um, and so it's just, it's just, um, we're reaching this point where it's becoming so obvious that um, the system that we have now is not built to help people succeed in many cases. It's helped, it's built to help certain people succeed. You know, I, I find myself uh, just trying to piece it all together and, and thinking about, all right, what's my responsibility and what, what role do I have to play? And, you know, I'm still trying to figure that out. Yep. Um, as we all should be. Right. And what are the ways in which our worldview needs to change? Not tomorrow, but like yesterday. <laughs> it's, it's easy to start sort of get to the point where like everything feels bad. Yes. You know, and we don't want to get there because that's when you give up, right. you know? I'm very grateful uh, for you coming on and sharing your magic and your wisdom. Uh, Tyler Twombly was on Fool Us with Penn and Teller. You didn't fool him, but just real quick, do you, d do you think before you went on that they already knew what your trick was and whether or not you'd fool them? Like, was it in the can or was there a chance? No, they're, they don't have any idea who they're going to see. Oh. You don't get to meet Penn and Teller before and you don't get to talk to them afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I did happen to, to, to um, catch them on a bathroom break. You know, they, they're like, hey, that was great. Thank you. You know, and it was like, nice. That's yeah, awesome. So that was fun. It was a great experience. Well, thank you again for your time. I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that right. was Tyler Twombly. Thank you. And finally, this. And I said, Sally, I love you, girl. Could you ever love this? <laughs> Thanks, I'm Brian Augusta. This is What A Night, and I'll see you next time.